just I wanted to show you how basically I have done one work uh, in the past to so this thing. I have simply in order to process an easy data or something like that, you simply install. First thing is you need to install, let's say, and see, I many may be working for one data, it may not be working for another. So based on what kind of problem you are solving, you need to refer that kind of package in Python. Simple uh, state market is like that. Let's say I am working with my PDF file. So second import I will be doing PyDF clip. So that is the second package you need to import. And everything you can do over Colab. No issues, something you need to install, something you need to import. So not a big deal for all these things. And you can implement either. Let's say if you are doing for feature extraction in easy signal, things will be completely different. And if you are simply doing classification tasks, things will be completely different. Because feature air signals are what? Air signals are frequency domain, time domain or spatial domain. So things will be complete. A lot of algorithms people have suggested for, let's say for temporal domain, domain spatial domain, or people have suggested for frequency domain. If you are working with what particular structure, then things get very, very from frequency domain to time domain and other domain. But roughly if you want to apply machine learning or deep learning, so the rest of the things are more or less same as you do, uh, as you do norm normally with any data frame structure. So only objective is to your what, whatever data you are getting in a EDF format or dot set format or CSV format, you try to convert it into da data frame format. And after that you can analyze this as a normal machine learning techniques. No much big deal in this kind of signal processes. You can very simply you can do. So this simple thing with the store I have written and second package I have written installed by PDF file. And if you want to do it, let's say for TensorFlow, open source library available for machine learning or deep learning. And if you want to plot your graph, MATLAB plot, you can use a lot of key bonds you can use, a lot of things are there. That is normally people, if you follow any normal literature for machine learning and deep learning, you can import and these are standard things that you need to import for processing of your signals. Now after that, whatever data you have, you, you kept the data either in the Google Colab or Kaggle directly or in your system, wherever you want to simply pass your pass that file. And that part you need to pass it. And that part, let's say you are connected to data, let's say I have separate data, I am showing you one data is with for depression and another with non-depression signal. So normally data graph is there. What is there? It is basically a collection of EDF files. So those EDF files are segregated in nature. One EDF file is totally consisting of only depression people and another time series graph is only showing about non-depression people. So you have two different sets of data. Only catch is that only if you want to train your model, it should be scrambled in nature. It should not be only one thing. If you are training your data and 100% let's say you have trained about only one data set, depression. And then that concatenation process is important. You need to concatenate both so that things will become random and then your training accuracy will be gradually increased. Because not you get this kind of thing. One thing I wanted to show you that once now let's say you have read the data from your drive or somewhere, raw data file you have a uh, let's say you put your data in the raw data file variables and then you are trying to put uh, information related to that. So now for information related to that, if you want to print, you can do the many package, many dot io dot. Let's say I am reading EDF file, so simply I will write read underscore raw underscore EDF. I am reading set file underscore set. I am reading some other files, I will simply. Because I mean support all these different kinds of file structure. The name of the functions are more or less same. You need to just simply change your variables or type of the files you want to analyze. And that data file you have analyzed and simply you are printing that info. That information if you are printing right now signal is still in analog in nature. This time is nature, no data frame you have created. So you can read that, whatever discussion we have done at the beginning, it will show you the name of the channel. Let's say I am analyzing that channel, or even it will print all 20 or 22 channels, whatever data we have. So you can see FP1 and E. Channel names are nothing, EEG, FP1 and E. Telling is what left hemisphere we are talking about and FP1 indicates prefrontal and normally we know uh, odd numbers are placed in the left hemisphere. So simply analyzing the channel you can understand what kind of information we are getting. Normally you have a low pass frequency and high. What is the reason of this? High pass and low pass. Normally whatever I have said in the beginning, biggest challenge in catching or collecting this kind of EG waveform for any practitioner is that you always you comes with some kind of interference and noises because wherever they are doing this, Normally they will keep a complete stomp proof kind of system. But still there are electrical noises, AC is running or something like that. So the signal comes with some kind of interference. So normally they put some kind of low pass filters and low pa high pass filter to just uh, ignore or to just uh, you can say uh, remove those kind of unwanted things from your 
channels for from your information. So let me say this data set is uh, showing you this I choose what high pass frequency of 0.5 hertz and uh, low pass frequency of 80 hertz. And rest is a very old data. Number of channels is showing and sampling frequency is showing. Sampling frequency is very much important because you need to convert a lot data into this transform. So whatever frequency this data is showing here. So this information you can get from any data set. You are simply reading it and simply showing and putting the information. You can come to know what kind of data it is. And then you can plot. Simply you can plot and simply using. And <coughs> once you are plotting this kind of graph, it is basically nothing. It's a PSD, probability spectral density functions will be getting. What information you want to plot, and until what frequency you want to see the data, you can just pass it to the PSD function. But that point is then there, plot underscore PSD functions you can use. How much maximum frequency I want to use, 40, let's say 0 to 40 hertz I want to plot. And accordingly you can pass this data. Kiska chahiye that thing also we can write. How much maximum frequency, which portion I want to pick from the signal, left uh, prefrontal and let's say left hemisphere of my skulls, then that information. These two graphs are simply collected from two different data sets. One is for let's say something is having some sleepy disorder or something like that and one first one is having normal. So looking into the graph and uh, analyzing the data of 0 to 40 hertz frequency, you can understand someone is having some kind of disturbances running in their minds or not. So let's say first graph is showing a little smooth kind of things, but uh, if you will see the second graph, it, you can see the things are a little bit high in nature. Amplitude you can see 0 to 5 frequency, it is showing a little bit high in nature. So you can accordingly you can think of if something is disturbing or some other tests are needed or not. So, till now still data is what? It is in analog or you can say digital in nature. You are not converted into data frame. So next thing what you can do is simply convert that data into data frame. The data you have, you have read through or everything through M any and then M any can be converted directly into data frame. So for that you can use NumPy simple, uh, pandas, NumPy, for processing anything. So you can use pandas library is also simple. So PD dot data frame can be converted into simply data frame and now what is this? You have number of channels, let's say uh, for this, I am showing only 5 channels information, it is let's say for 20 channels, because normally based on your headsets it could be up to 256 channels. If it is very accurate, you could collect that much number of information. 256 places you could put that select portion out. But here I am showing you only 5 channels information, because graph a little bit, uh, you can say data a little bit going outside. So you can show till 20 channels, and every channel you can see, now data has been converted into what? In a numeric form. So now every channel information you have. So whatever based on your uh, portion of the skull, which information, so you can use that times this data. So let's say you want to put it into the neural network model. So simply inputs will be what? The number of channels there. I want to put it into LSTM model, simply I will convert that data into tuples form because LSTM normally takes data in a tuples form, not a straight data. So based on your needs, you can classify or do and further you can do. Because now data you have achieved in a form of what? In an integer format. So now data is in integer format, it's just like a simple data we are getting in a CSV file or somewhere. You can process this for your further processing for classification of the other ones. So that's the point we can here. Scrambling is very important because whatever data you have got, that data is uh, different. So you need to concatenate both data. Otherwise, the information will not be going to be taken. Training accuracy is also always. Sometimes people ignore training accuracy and do not differentiate between model accuracy and training accuracy. If your mom, someone is not trained during the time of teaching, let's say, I'm teaching someone and he is not trained properly, definitely when I'm going to test that student is going to be paid. So I need to be assured during training also I need to ask so many questions, so many questions, so that you can answer everything correctly. So some, you need to, that for the reason to achieve a higher training accuracy, you need to put the data in a not be separately you need to train. So that's all and this thing you can do later on training and testing and splitting of the data 80% data and that's it for training and 20% testing. And that thing you can do it. So that's simple uh, things uh, that I have shown you. How we speed the process of data and by using any pattern. Do it very easy, very easy. Within a span of five two, three days, if you just go to that pattern you can understand how to process all these kinds of signal. One area where you can walk this signal. Those who have not started all working in that area, I don't know. But uh, there are a lot of business direction. At the beginning also, I have told you the biggest thing is that teacher extension techniques are available. A uh, lot of techniques are available and people have contributed a lot. You will see a lot of research works in this area. 
AR whatever I have written the AR is nothing is an auto regression modeling kind of things which are very popular algorithm in case of time domain and normally wavelength based things are very much popular because you are whenever you are uh, you can say simply processing any signals wavelength is one of the good component in terms of processing so we have a lot of variation of wavelength feature extraction wavelengths and DWT wavelength plus WT lot of kind of transform that in only using image or signal processing that all you can hit and trial and apply and accordingly you may get a good result in terms of processing and if your data is properly processed then if you are using some kind of model or something like that you could get a good result and you can continue to also you can say that you have done something different from others let's say so this one area where you can work second good processing uh, that the point signal quality is very needed feature extraction you can do classification algorithm people have a lot of classification algorithm in this thing that way also you can explore but still there are crucial things that are still pending even Elon Musk is trying to generate a thread kind of thing let's say this company Neuralink and trying to put that thread into our brain and from there after that everything will be controlled by that thread only so a lot of good uh, corporates so in foreign US and Japan US has so many companies which are working in this area they are looking for new new contributions and accordingly they can make a product which can help human health system that is the biggest point that is one area here you can do BCI is very catchy very catchy people can use it very computer interface in so many things and thank you and last quotation our heart is made our only machine that was without any rest for years so keep it always healthy and happy whether it's your or others so both things are very important for us our brain as well as our heart thank you